On June 30th, 2019, the current economic expansion tied the old record from the Clinton decade of 40 quarters. And as each month passes without a recession, the current economic expansion will be setting new records for duration if not strength, but that's another story for another day. As we have pointed out many times, economic expansions do not end because of old age. It usually takes a policy mistake. In the past, when inflation pressures have emerged, the Federal Reserve would intentionally remove the punch bowl by raising interest rates and end the party. But somewhere among the Q4 2018 equity swoon, President Trump's jawboning for lower rates, in fears of a trade war-induced recession, the Fed stopped raising rates with the effective Fed funds rate at 2.4 percent. Now, previous expansions were ended by much higher short-term rates. For example, 5.2 percent in 2007, 6.5 percent in 2000, 9.8 percent in 1989, a whopping 19 percent in 1981, and even the pre-70s expansion of the 60s ended with a federal funds rate at 9%. Our point is that it's pretty hard to argue that 2.4% short-term rates will be the straw that breaks the back of this record long-lived economic expansion. I mean, what's wrong with the 2.4% interest rates? Large corporations are willing to pay out an average dividend of just a shade under 2%. The inflation rate is somewhere between 1.5% and 2%. There's really nothing all that wrong. So what are the prime candidates for a policy mistake this time around if the Fed is not going to be the culprit? First, trade war and weaponizing tariffs. Tariffs are a tax. This U.S. Republican administration has used tariffs as a weapon in its trade wars to attempt to force concessions from countries around the world, China, Mexico, Canada, and now the focus turns to Europe. One can argue about who pays the tariff tax and which countries are hurt the most, but global trade is clearly decelerating. The U.S. and China are most other countries' number one or number two trading partners, and both the U.S. and China are seeing their imports decelerate or even decline in some cases. When global trade slows, so does global growth. We doubt the trade wars and weaponization of tariffs are enough to cause a U.S. recession, but slower real GDP growth does seem to be in the cards. Second, there might be another government shutdown or a debt ceiling crisis. The U.S. federal government will run out of funding on September 30th, 2019, if new spending legislation is not agreed and signed into law. Extraordinary measures to avoid a breach of the debt ceiling of $22 trillion are likely not to be effective past September. Thus, a funding and debt ceiling crisis are in the making. If President Trump, the Republican-led Senate, and the Democratic-led House of Representatives cannot agree legislation by September 30th, this year's second federal government shutdown may commence. Now, there's still plenty of time to avoid a crisis, although typically deals are not cut until the final hour is upon us. If a shutdown and debt ceiling crisis does hit, it may last longer and do more economic damage than previous episodes. So while neither a shutdown, a debt ceiling crisis, or the trade wars on their own would be likely to cause a recession, the combination could be the trigger. I'm Blue Putnam, Chief Economist, CME Group.